dear students uh, in this class we are going to start with uh, the third model that is uh, image restoration so in the second model uh, we have discussed about the image enhancement techniques so image restoration is again uh, another form of image enhancement so here uh, i have listed out the outcomes of this particular model so after studying this model you will be able to describe the image degradation and restoration model along with uh, the probability density functions of different uh, types of noise and also you will be able to comprehend different restoration techniques using both uh, the spatial and frequency domain this will be the outcomes uh, after completing the third module that is image restoration okay first uh, we are going to start with the word image restoration okay as the name itself indicates here we are going to re restore the image but the objective is to make uh, image better okay so again uh, image restoration objective is to improve the quality of the image but however image restoration is objective process but image enhancement is subjective process this try to understand the words subjective and objective process okay so image enhancement is subjective process it means that the enhancement of the image it depends on the perspective of the audience it depends on the people who are going to view that particular image but our image restoration it is an objective process here again we are going to use the different uh, mathematical and probabilistic model to improve the quality of the image but however we are going to improve the quality of the image with certain objective this particular process we call it as image restoration okay so in this mod in this model first uh, we are going to start with image uh, degradation and uh, restoration model so generally we can model the image degradation and uh, restoration by using this particular block diagram okay okay if you look at this uh, block diagram here we have the input image f of xy f of xy is the input image and uh, for this input image we are going to design the degradation function i assume that this particular image it is degraded by the function h okay and uh, here we have the output of this uh, output of this block so output of this block now i can write it as f of xy convolute with h of xy in generally the assumption is that the noise is going to appear in the form of uh, convolved function okay that's why here i can say that the output of this first block is the input image f of xy convolute with h of xy so this h of xy is the degradation function right okay assume that you are going to transmit this image on some channel or you are performing some image transmission operation okay while transmitting the image there is every possibility of uh, appearance of noise which is uh, uh, we can say noise from the channel or noise from the media right so that noise we can represent it as net of uh, xy so here net of xy it represents the additive noise due to the channel interference okay so now the g of xy that is the output of this uh, entire degradation block can be represented as g of xy equal to f of xy that is the input image convolution with h of xy that is it is degraded by some function h of xy plus as i told uh, net of xy is additive noise we write it as plus net of xy okay so this is now in the spatial domain right now here we have restoration technique so for uh, restoration purpose what we do is we use this g of xy we use this g of xy 
and uh, we are going to estimate f cap of x y. So this f cap of x y it is called as restored image. Students, please try to understand the concept. Here we have g of x y, which is the image with some degradation. Degradation means the image with uh, poor quality. We can say right. Here, this uh, g of x y is taken as the input for a restoration model, and the output of this restoration model is f cap of x y. We call this f cap of x y as uh, the restored image. So, for uh, restoration purpose, we are going to make use of again the different filters. We use filters from both the spatial domain as well as from the frequency domain. Okay. But however, while using these filters, we'll be knowing uh, or we'll be estimating the degradation function. Once you come to know that the image is affected by a particular noise, you can decide which kind of filter is to be used so as to restore the image or so as to uh, improve the quality of the image. Okay. So this entire diagram, this entire block diagram, can be referred to as image degradation and restoration model. This up to this part, from this part to this part, this uh, it is referred to as degradation model, and from this part to this part, it is referred to as restoration. Okay, and uh, we have seen that this g of x y is equal to f of x y convolution with h of x y plus net of x y. However, however. If you find uh, the Fourier transform of this above equation, you will be getting g of uv. g of uv is the Fourier transform of g of xy equal to capital F of u comma v multiplied with capital H of u comma v. We know that the multiplication in time domain is equal to convolution in spatial domain. Here, this convolution operation I can represent as the multiplication of the terms f of uv and h of uv plus this capital N of uv indicates the Fourier transform of net of xy. Okay, so this is the equation we are writing uh, in the form of uh, frequency domain, right? So this is uh, all about image degradation and restoration model, but Actually, before uh, we carry out image uh, restoration process, we must have the idea about uh, the type of noise which has affected the image. Because uh, without knowing what is the objective, you cannot apply the image restoration techniques. That's why at the beginning itself, I told that image restoration is objective process. It is not the subjective process. That's why many of the times we require to estimate the noise uh, appeared a type of noise that has affected the image, right? So to have that concept, or to find out the type of noise uh, that the image has, we need the idea of uh, noise models. Here uh, in this chapter or in this model. We are going to discuss about uh, the different noise models. Okay, we have uh, about six noise models. We are going to discuss this one by one. Okay, but in generally, the noise it is random in nature. So the random data always it is represented by using probability density functions. In short, they are referred to as PDF. PDF stands for probability density function okay noise as it appears uh, randomly to represent the noise or to model the noise functions we are going to use probability density functions okay okay here uh, first we have the gaussian noise so basically the gaussian noise it appears due to electronic circuit noise we know that the electronic circuits mainly they are made up of semiconductors. So semiconductors they are going to introduce some noise while capturing the image. Okay, this noise we can call it as electronic circuit noise. 
and even gaussian noise may be due to sensor uh, noise or even it may appear due to poor illumination even poor illumination may also cause the appearance of gaussian noise in the image and even the gaussian noise may also appear due to high temperature so the sensors uh, when they are subjected to high temperature that may again cause for gaussian noise so gaussian noise may be due to three factors they are electronic circuits sensor noise and even poor illumination and uh, sensors due to high temperature these are the three factors which may cause for gaussian noise so here the probability density function for the gaussian noise can be represented as p of z so p of z is the probability density function for gaussian noise so it is represented by using this particular equation 1 divided by square root of 2 pi sigma exponent of mu it is uh, mu minus sorry it is uh, u minus mu packet square divided by 2 sigma square okay okay here uh, we have some of the parameters uh, before this equation try to understand uh, always uh, the gray level values they are represented by using the variable z in this particular context we represent uh, the gray level values of the image by using the parameter z and remember remember mu means the average of gray level values the mean of gray level values is represented by using the parameter mu and sigma is the standard deviation it is standard deviation of the gray level values that has appeared in the image and sigma square indicates sigma square indicates variance so remember this parameters z it is going to represent the gray level values of the image mu it represents mean of average values of z sigma is the standard deviation and sigma square it indicates the variance okay uh, no way you have to remember these equations for probability density functions of different noise and here we have the plot of gaussian noise so if you plot uh, p of z it is going to appear in this particular form okay so this is about the gaussian noise the next uh, we have relay noise so the relay noise mainly it appears due to range imaging so while uh, you are taking images from the different range like uh, something if you are zooming the image or if you are changing size of the image that time it will cause for relay noise so the pdf of relay noise can be represented by using this equation p of z equal to z divided by b uh, g minus a uh, students please uh, go through the notes for these equations they are not clear in the slides okay so this particular equation we use for representing the probability density function of relay noise and uh, the mean and variance of the density of the noise can be computed by using these two equations mu equal to a plus square root of pi p by 4 and sigma square which is uh, variance is given by b in packet 4 minus pi divided by 4 students uh, as i told no way you have to remember these equations okay and here we have the plot of relay noise okay so remember mainly the range imaging is the main cause for appearance of relay noise in the image and this is the probability density function this is how to calculate the mean and the variance and this is the plot uh, we get for p of z of relay noise okay next uh, we have 
gamma noise so actually this uh, gamma noise uh, it is due to the gamma function that we are going to use it is named as gamma noise because uh, we have the gamma function right so that here again uh, the probability density function is given and uh, we have the equations for computing the mean and variance of this noise and this is a plot and one more thing you remember the gamma noise is also referred to as erlang noise many of the times the gamma noise it is also called as erlang noise the word gamma is used due to the gamma functions employed in representing the probability density functions of this particular type of noise okay next uh, we have exponential noise the exponential noise uh, mainly it is uh, used in the laser imaging the main application of uh, the exponential noise we find in laser imaging okay it is uh, given by the equation p of z equal to a into e raised to a z it is a into e raised to a z e means exponent function okay where a is greater than 0 Uh, it is a special case of erlang noise with uh, b equal to 1 just refer the notes for details okay so this is uh, the plot of exponential noise right so remember the exponential noise it has application particularly in laser imaging okay and this is uh, the probability density function of uh, exponential noise and uh, this is a plot we are going to get and when we draw p of z of exponential noise the next uh, we have uniform noise as the name itself indicates we may find the noise which is uniformly distributed across the entire image that we call it as uniform noise okay so uniform noise it can be represented as p of z equal to p of z equal to 1 divided by b minus a suppose if z is between a and p okay if you refer this plot you can understand so here on the x axis we have z that is variable values of the image on the y axis we have p of z this is pdf function p of z okay and this is b value b means some gray level value which has higher range and this is uh, a a is uh, another range we have taken okay so now the equation for p of z can be written as 1 divided by 1 divided by b minus a suppose if the value of z lies between a and p otherwise it is zero means only at certain gray level values in the particular range of pixel intensities this noise is going to appear or it is defined we can say okay okay next uh, we have impulse noise the impulse noise it is also referred to as salt and pepper noise impulse noise it is also called as salt and pepper noise okay first uh, let us try to understand what is impulse so in generally in any of the signal system theory the lowest frequency signal and highest frequency signal they can be considered as impulse or noise in that signal right so that uh, here here if you consider uh, the impulse noise with respect to image Uh, this is the plot we have so again on the x axis we have shown the gray level value z on the y axis we have shown p of z that is the probability density function for impulse noise so impulse noise p of z it is equal to p a if z is equal to a if z is equal to a that is low frequency component if 
z is equal to a then we get p of z equal to p a similarly if z is equal to b we get p b otherwise p of z is equal to zero try to understand only the lowest intensity value and the highest intensity value they are referred to as impulse noise okay can you think uh, what is the reason for using the word salt and pepper so we know that salt it appears in uh, white color and pepper it uh, appears in something like uh, dark color or black you can say right so in the image okay assume that uh, you have an image uh, where the black color is uh, dominant there if you get some white dots right those white dots they can be referred to as salt noise so usually when you get uh, the xerox of any of the image where uh, the black color is dominant you may get some uh, white uh, dots right those white dots can be considered as salt noise on the other hand on the other hand if you get uh, the document uh, xerox where uh, the white color is dominant you may get some black dots also right those black dots they can be considered as the pepper noise okay so that's why the impulse noise it is referred to as salt and pepper noise so white color it has highest gray level value white color it has highest gray level value and black color it has the lowest gray level value right Uh, that is the reason why we use impulse are salt and pepper noise okay okay here uh, again there is every possibility that only p of p a may appear assume that you may get only uh, the lowest frequency components only salt noise may appear or even an image may also contain only the pepper noise so if you have only p a only if p a is there or only if p b is there then this noise can be referred to as unipolar noise please try to understand only if uh, p of z is equal to p a if p b is equal to 0 that time it is called as uh, it is called as pepper noise and if uh, z is equal to b that is only if p of z is equal to p b that time it is called as uh, salt noise in other words if only one component is present it can be referred to as unipolar noise or if uh, both the components are available if you have both the impulse values then it can be referred to as salt and pepper noise dear students uh, basically we use the median filter to remove the impulse noise the impulse noise can be removed by using median filter just try to recall already we have discussed about median filter so as the name itself indicates in the median filter we are going to consider the median of neighborhood of pixels right that median value certainly it will not be the lowest value or will not be highest value what we do is in uh, median filter we take three by three set of pixels and we are going to replace the center pixel with the median of those nine values so by performing that median filter in operation it is possible to remove the impulse noise from the image so this is uh, all about the different types of noise uh, we have in the in this particular module okay okay just uh, i'm going to summarize the things so in the today's class we have seen what is image restoration so image restoration is the process of restoring the image to improve the quality of the image but however it is objective process right so we use uh, some mathematical and probabilistic models to restore Are to improve the quality of the image. Then we discussed about uh, image degradation and restoration model. 
we discussed about uh, this log diagram then after that uh, we discussed about the different types of noise we have seen uh, the probability density functions for different types of noise with their equations as well as their uh, plots okay students uh, here we can expect two questions on the topics uh,